And this is Gina, this is going to be your counselor. Hi, nice to meet you. Welcome to Good. Tomar. Okay. What do you oh, got? You what got is it. that? <laughs> you got candy. Is that candy? <laughs> is this a better place? Yes, it's a better place. But you know what's important? Well, that you don't touch it, people. Have you been here before? Yes. Many of our kids that we have here, and Justin's a good case, he has nowhere to go. Stop! Oh, I like the blue in here. What do you think? I like the blanket. You like the blanket? <laughs> so, are you ready? Yeah. How you feeling? Are you good? Good? Yep. Tell me where you're going. Huh. The mindlessness of the policies and practices that turn troubled youths into failed adults are beyond maddening. At last count, there were approximately 66,000 youths confined in juvenile facilities, two-thirds in long-term placements, such as state-run training schools, what happens to them when they end up in this system? The beginning. Here's a look at 14-year-old Justin, who ended up in the American juvenile justice system for a crime he had never committed. And that's not all. Justin had an IQ of 40, making him officially a special needs person. This voiceless angel was left to the doubtful merits of a juvenile system broken at multiple levels for seven years, until by a twist of fate, he ended up on the radar of people who decided to adopt his cause and fight for his freedom. You know, he has no family out there who's willing to take him in and to provide him with the care that he needs. No mom, no dad. Because his IQ level and his functioning level is so low, he can't participate in the normal programming. I've always been in trouble. I've always been a juvenile. I got in a fight and gave somebody 15 stitches in his eye. Once you pull that trigger, it feels like it starts to twitch and you can't let go. This young boy had an irresistible charm all his own as he joked around with freedom, basking under the loving, tender presence of the only friends he had in the world. These were the people who recognized the free spirit that was Justin and looked beneath his tainted skin marked as a juvenile delinquent by the American justice system. The Pendleton Juvenile Correctional Facility was home to Justin, along with some 400 other boys with ages ranging from 10 to 21. Their legal offenses ranged from the mundane to the most horrendous, making for an ill environment for any young boy. This building was a graveyard for childhood where the young fell prey regularly and lost their innocence. It was home to a population largely made up of black and brown faces, children who messed up on the other side of bars by being led into situations designed by the elders in whose care they had been. These juvenile centers are the proof of the broken parts of a society indulging in self-love and pleasure at the expense of its youth and youngsters. In the midst of this was Justin, a young boy whose family structure, as well as society, had failed him in an unforgivable way. What do you oh, got? What you is got that? <laughs> you got candy. Is that candy? <laughs> and he's placed at this facility based upon the needs because at this facility there is 24-hour medical care here. You been here before? Yes. Many of our kids that we have here, Justin's a good case, he has nowhere to go. His mental health situation and things like that, you know, all prison did was make him worse. You see, Justin lacked the deceptive acumen and cruel streak required to string people along or deceive them with a facade not based on reality. His 40 score on the intelligence quotient scale rendered him a simpleton by any standard. He was not a hardened criminal with the body of a youngster and the soul of a devil. Kate Frazier was the warrior angel as if descended from heaven to take care of children like Justin. Recognizing his special needs capacity, Kate immediately took him under her wing, keeping a close eye on Justin, who was deemed as a one-on-one -on -one juvenile, meaning that one staff member had to accompany him at all times. What a dichotomy! The state seemed to realize that Justin's cognitive deficiency was so severe that he needed special care even within the detention center. Unable to become a meaningful part of the juvenile education program due to his limitations, he was still confined behind bars in an extremely negative environment. As Kate stated, the foul language Justin had been exhibiting had not been present when he had first arrived at the facility. Frustrating with where he's at mentally and emotionally. It's just, this is not the place and it's just been really hard. We just absolutely have to find a way and answer. Uh, to their re-entry process. And the other kids that he is around um, recognize his disabilities and they take advantage of it. Find resolutions or solutions to getting these kids or keeping these kids out of the prison system. And when you look at the, the actual case, that offense probably is an injustice in and of itself. 
Even Mike Dempsey, the superintendent at Pendleton, recognized the futility of children, like Justin, ending up at a juvenile correctional facility. Putting such kids behind bars is a travesty of justice, and the entire narrative behind such actions needs to be overhauled and looked at under the lens of reality. Children like Justin become victims of fate, and his case in particular seems to indicate that he had been dumped in the juvenile system since he has no place to go to. It's obvious that children like Justin need grown-ups with big hearts who are willing to work hard and sacrifice to find solutions for their untreatable problems, and Mike Dempsey seemed to be cast in the role of hero for Justin. The administrative gurus and state officials recognize the need to keep such children out of the juvenile connection system because of the negative influences rife at these facilities. Such kids become the target of youngsters like themselves who are much sharper at recognizing their below-capacity IQ and are not beyond using it for their own advantage. In Justin's case, the offense he had committed had roots within his own experiences as a young child of five years old. He had not been appointed to any counsel at his trial hearing, which was beyond understanding. Things are just getting a lot worse. I I'm really thinking that our only option is to really look at Damar. That that's that's one issue. I mean, it is is it it is expensive. Um, and talked a little bit about the services that they provide at Damar, and I really think that that's probably going to be our only option. State rules had rendered Justin an orphan of the state, and at the time, there was no agency equipped or authorized to pay for the expensive care he would re be receiving at Damar a campus-like facility for special needs individuals like Justin. He seemed to have been abandoned by a state structure looking for a quick fix at the expense of young children who deserve better. Mary Beth Bonaventura had put the problem quite succinctly. A lack of funding along with absence of interagency communication were allowing kids like Justin to fall through the cracks. It was going to cost Pendleton $350 a day to put Justin into Damar only if he got accepted over there. For Kate and Justin, Monday couldn't roll around soon enough. Well, there's one thing Mike Dempsey cannot be accused of, which is taking the path of least resistance. Easy Street was not his motto. Life at Damar Imprisoned in shackles even as he left for Damar, a shameful sight indicative of the mistreatment meted out to him. This picture will remain a blight on the American justice system recorded in infamy. Clearly, Justin had been deprived of his right to dignity. Leaving for Damar was a double-edged sword for Justin because he would be losing the only person who had ever cared for him and he had finally come to trust, his counselor and friend, Kate Frazier. Is this a better place? Yes, it's a better place. But you know what's important? Well, that you don't touch it, people. Kate, have you been out here before? I've never been here. <laughs> so what's your first impression? I'm very impressed. Okay, turn it this way. Now go ahead. Okay, you want to put some clothes in there? Do you like scary books? Mm -hmm. Justin looking out the window as his only tether in a stormy sea left him at his new home is a picture of forlorn abandonment, a state of affairs very familiar to him in his young tragic life. Justin's case was not a run-of-the-mill juvenile delinquent story. His circumstances set him apart from the usual kids ending up in the juvenile system. How did he fall through the cracks of a system designed to provide individuals like him protection? Keep going, Justin. That's, you'll be going in the girls' building there. <laughs> and this is Gina. This is going to be your counselor. Hi, nice to meet you. Welcome to Tumar. Okay. That's Hi, your teacher. How are you? Good. My name is Mr. Trueblood. I'm going to be your school teacher here, buddy. Huh. What do you think? Good. Good? <laughs> okay. Leanne Davis at The Ark, a nonprofit organization working to provide facilities to special needs persons, had some light to shed on this issue. And there you have it. All it boils down to in the end is a limitation of resources. Supreme Court Justices Loretta Rush and Stephen David have a dismal assessment of the state in which most of these children end up at juvenile court, and their opinion is that a humane treatment goes a long way. It's apparent that Justin had progressed in leaps and bounds within the 18 months. He had lived a lifetime and seemed to have grown into a remarkably mature adult. Not only that, but he has found a new guardian angel in the facility's counselor, Fred. This is where it had all started. The gains Justin had made left Kate Frazier teary-eyed. He had come a long way and surprisingly, it has been a privilege being witness to Justin a new family for himself. One which was not based on a blood bond, but something much more deeper, humanity. Hey Justin, yeah. we're gonna show you around later, but we wanna take you to your new home first, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Will that work? 
These new shoes? Yeah. Let me see them. I like the blue in here. What do you think? I like the blanket. You like the blanket? <laughs> How about this right you? here? Is that okay? Yeah. You cover up with it a little bit? You get frustrated and you try to figure out what can we possibly do to you know, make a difference, but you don't ever give up. On to adulthood. Turning 18 comes with its own set of problems for Justin, who has no family to turn to before he's released on society. He has been approved to move into a children's home being run by Damar, where he will start his journey into adulthood. There was a recognition at some level that if kids like Justin had been given the proper professional care and support at the right time in their lives, their problems would not have snowballed into the magnitude they had attained, costing the state a pretty penny to set them on the path back to normality. Mike Dempsey, Mary Beth Bonventura, Justices Loretta Rush and Stephen David were some of the people who make an entire team of individuals working untiringly. If you ever wanted to see an enactment of passing the buck, this statement would be it. So, are you ready? Yeah. How are you feeling? Are you good? good? Yep. Tell me where you're going. Huh. The uh, driver's high. No. That'd be awesome. No, that would not. I would probably crash it. <laughs> are you excited? Why are we taking that trip to California, Karen? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> Justin's words are haunting. Despite having grown up into an 18-year-old adult, he's still at the heart of a 14-year-old boy who ended up at a juvenile correctional facility, missing his home and the non-existent love of a mother he still missed. The efforts by individuals like these have brought a metamorphosis across the juvenile system in America with the advent of the juvenile detention alternatives launched. You are ready, aren't you? Yeah. You are ready. Who are you going to dance with tonight? Nobody. Oh, come on. Right, that's look, look, you've been nominated as no. prom king. Yes, you have. Hi. I'm trying to be No, I did not. No, I did not. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.